Well, this is an interesting one because I'm in Basra, which is good news. I'm in Basra. I'm in southern federal Iraq, about to start another excursion around a part of the world that I've not fully explored yet. The inconvenience, so to speak, about that is that it is now currently 25 to 5 in the morning and all hotels appear to be shut. See, like this one, big shiny one, looks all right, but it's, it's not having it. It just isn't having it, boys. Admittedly, that one's probably out of budget anyway. So we're in now, let's get a move on. So I suppose this one's gonna start like this. This, ladies and gents, is what Basra looks like at half four in the morning, in case you ever wondered. Yeah, I got a few laps of Basra to do, I think, to kill some time until the sun comes up. It's not the glistening start I'd hoped for, all right? I'll admit that. But what are you gonna do? We're here now, and we go again. That's all that matters. Sleep or no sleep, we go again. Right, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm getting mauled by... Getting mauled by some wild Iraqi bin dogs. Help. Why are they... Help. Why are they still human? You leave me alone. Go to bed. Oh, I think... I think I'm free again. Oh, what a start. What a brilliant start to this... To this trip. Sleepless, and then within half an hour of arriving, viciously attacked by wild animals. So, I was probably going to make a point towards the end of this series, or whatever, about how safe it is to travel in Iraq. I'll take that back. On day one, it's not, not a good place to be. Wrong part of town. Don't come to Basri, you're going to get killed by dogs. We've made our way onto the corniche of Basra. This runs along the banks of the Shat al Arab River. Uh, and we're finally starting to see some rumblings of life waking up in Basra. And that's good news, because then we can start looking at stuff. Along this corniche, there is a boat. The one behind me. Not that one, the, the big blue shiny one. Which I believe this could actually be a bit of a stretch. I think that is Saddam Hussein's boat. Pretty sure. Actually, I think it is. It says presidential on it. That's pretty indisputable in it. There you go, the Basra breeze. Saddam's boat. Right, I believe the sun is officially up. It is daylight and we can begin. And this chap behind me is Badr Shakir al Sayab, famous poet in the Arab world. He's from Basra. He died in 1964. He's a pretty big deal. So they built a statue of him at the end of the, uh, of the cornage. Right, I've stumbled across this lion attacking someone thing no idea what it is or why it's on this roundabout it's probably quite a good time to admit that i am as unprepared as i've probably ever been on a trip before for this one three days ago i booked a flight from istanbul to basra and that is as much notice as i gave myself because i had a week off for other things that i had planned and got cancelled so i was free for a week and it just kind of happened and here I am winging it <laughs> like the good old days. Not really sure what's gonna go on, but if this trip ends up anything less than a disaster, I'm gonna class it as a blazing success. I've never really considered coming to this part of Iraq, so-called federal Iraq, to distinguish it from the Kurdish bit that some people call Kurdistan, some call it Iraqi Kurdistan, some call it the Kurdish part of Iraq. Whichever one annoys the least amount of people, Five years ago, which is when I was in Iraq last time in Kurdistan, this part was not really accessible without a very long visa process. Now you can get a visa on arrival for a lot of different nationalities. So it's much more accessible to come to this southern so-called federal or proper, for some people, Iraq. I'm trying to be careful there. I've annoyed a lot of people by calling it the neutral name before. Got to tiptoe a little bit. So yeah, three days ago was the first I knew about coming to Iraq at all, never mind specifically Basra or any other places. And I've tried to make a little bit of a plan, a theoretical plan for how to get between cities and there's a lot to see and a lot of distance to cover. So 
we'll see how that goes. But for now, first impressions of the first stop. And I'm gonna try and be polite because it's early and there's still time for it to improve. So I'm gonna say this delicately. A couple of things really. Daylight was not nice to the city because it just kind of revealed a couple of things. Firstly, it's not the tidiest or cleanest place in the world. I don't even think the locals are gonna dispute that. It's pretty bad. It's probably the worst of those two things I've ever experienced in terms of a city. And I've been to some places where it seems they've not even invented bins yet. And secondly, I've seen far too many dead dogs for this time in the morning. I don't even think I've seen a dead dog before. And this morning I've seen a few, like more than you could count on one hand. It's, it's not great. It's really not great. I don't really like saying those things because it's going to come across as like slander to the people or the place or whatever. It's not. I just can't not tell you them. If you're watching this ahead of coming, it's going to be a less bad experience for you if you just expect those things from the beginning and then you'll be all right. However, this is a city and country, in fact, in kind of recovery mode. It's had a very tumultuous few decades, not even a few years. It's just, it's not had a great time, well, since long before I was alive. The weather is actually quite mild, it's quite nice. It is quite pleasant to not be freezing at the minute, especially in February. The sun keeps breaking through a bit as well. It's really quite all right weather-wise. It's very easy to get around. There's a lot of taxis driving about. There's also the Karim app, which is like an Arab version of Uber across most of the Arab countries in the world. Uh, so that's brilliant. And no one has tried to overcharge me when I've not used Karim. I've gone to the taxi guy. Can you take me to this place? How much is it? He's gone this much money, which is exactly the same as Kareem. So no one's even trying to rip you off anyway. That is also good. And another decent thing is that the people here don't seem to really care that you're here in the best possible way. They're still friendly. They're not ignorant. They're still warm and welcoming and all the other Araby things. I just mean that they're not staring at you from a distance or making you feel like you stand out or anything like that. It's the same as every other Arab country, most of them. So I've kind of come to expect it. I just mean that, you know, for me, the thing that makes me feel unsafe in a place is when I feel incredibly singled out. It's not the case here. They don't really notice that you're here, which is a good thing. The bad thing is they just don't notice the dead animals either. It's really not a great point. <sighs> Although saying all that, uh, I think I have just stumbled down the Iraqi Humberston Avenue. <laughs> Look at that crib. Some absolute cribs. I've also just had my first run in with the feds. They uh, asked me for my uh, passport and then didn't really ask me any other questions except can we help you with anything so i was like no i'm all good cheers pal and off they went so overall quite pleasant do you remember earlier when i said i had a plan i think i had a, said i had a rough plan if i did then even rough was generous because what i actually have is a list of destinations that might be interesting to visit if we can find a way to get there not much information about certain methods of transport. So there is a train that runs from Basra to Baghdad overnight, and I wanna to go to Baghdad, but it only runs on weekends and today is not a weekend. So I'm gonna to go to the train station and see if that information is actually correct. See if there is one tonight. If so, we're going to Baghdad boys. If not, I'm not sure what the plan is. So going towards the train station now, fingers crossed. Yeah, looks like a pretty mad little train station. All right, chaps, we're going to Baghdad. We have acquired a train ticket in a bed in a four-person compartment. 
sucks to be them because I'm going to snore my head off because I'm <laughs> absolutely shagged. I also, in the midst of that process, made a new pal called Hassan. Gave me tea and him and his pals chilled for a bit. Obviously, he spoke no English, I spoke no Arabic, so the classic, really. But I had some tea, made some pals. Everyone's a winner. This is the, uh, the Virgin Mary Chaldean Church in Basra. It's quite an interesting one. This was abandoned just before ISIS and a lot of Christians got removed or killed um, and it was just abandoned since then. A couple of years ago they renovated it. It cost a grand total of 270 million Iraqi dinar, which it sounds like a lot. It's about 200 grand in uh, English money to do. But the weird thing about it is, even when it was completed, a study found there's only about 50 people in all of Basra that actually come to this church because of the specific branch of Christianity that it is. So although they went to all the effort of rebuilding it and putting it all back together and returning it to its former glory, there's not that many people actually use this ever. Despite the severely dwindling numbers of people that still use this, they do claim that it is important to have it for the reason that, you know, Iraq's roots are more Christian than Muslim. Christianity has been around for a lot longer than Islam. So uh, it's here, it's renovated, it's good to go. It's closed, but it's good to go. Um, and even though there's only a handful of people that use it, they quite like it. Now and again, when walking around the back streets, catch a glimpse of a seen better days version of what was referred to as a Shana Shiel a few hundred years ago. These are like crafted wooden bay windows that were designed to catch the wind, the air, as it went past to try and act as like a cooling system. One of these. However, they have been infamously badly maintained and there aren't that many of them left as much as it was like an Iraqi tradition. Not many of them have survived, so we can catch a glimpse of a couple of them, although not in their best ever condition, I've got to say. But this is a bit of a throwback to 17th and 18th century rich people. That's what they would have done to their houses back then. It's kind of a sign of wealth and, you know, very Iraqi thing to do. And uh, stumbled across another church in our random ramblings of this area. As I was leaving that other church, by the way, it kind of backs onto someone's house in a weird way. Um, got invited to some scran by my new mate, Ali, and his mates, again, and his dogs, his pet dogs, not dogs that are gonna be left for dead. The dogs, <laughs> dogs are called Terry and The Rock. <laughs> but anyway, it was a vibe, it was a good vibe. And yeah, just to once again clarify, the observations I'm making about the physical condition of this city Make no bearing on its people, because the people, as with a lot of the Arab world, are brilliant. And I've said that a thousand times, so I'm not going to go over it again, because you get the point. But when I say dogs are dying, and it's not very clean, it doesn't take away from the people's warmth and brilliance. Broken record, I know. So I'll stop. I'm sure this is going to be a thing across all Iraq, and not specifically to Basra, but there's a lot of American cars in Iraq. That's what's kind of surprised me a little bit. Whether it's like a naughty little Dodge Charger or some big beefy GMC thing. Just a lot of American whips kicking about and some pretty, pretty saucy ones as well. Look at this one as well, coming in with a dark green. Gives some of that. Coming up to 12 hours of aimlessly meandering around Basra, covered almost about 20 miles or so. A couple of breaks in there with our pal Ali, our pal Hassan, um, their pals and everyone else. As you can probably see, Basra isn't exactly full to the brim with specific sites. Not necessarily saying it's not worth a visit, but if you're watching this, trying to work out what you're doing in Iraq, you wouldn't miss a lot of touristy highlights by not coming here. Admittedly, there's a lot of stuff that we haven't seen today, but nonetheless, I think. The way you're going to get the best out of Basra is by spending it with the locals, really. Slowing down a bit, spending time, getting fed scran all day by random strangers. That would be my recommendation, as opposed to a place where you'd come and take really photogenic pictures about loads of key sites in Iraq. A couple of big ones here, but realistically, I don't think it's one of those places. 
just a heads up. And yep, that Basra is about that. About to hop on uh, this bad boy. It's a sleeper train to Baghdad. I'm just so excited for a bed. You cannot imagine. It's been, it's been a day. It's definitely been a day, even though it feels more like a week. Can't believe I only landed this morning. I've been awake for some time now, so uh, off for a bit of a sleep. Catch you in Baghdad in a bit.